Greetings, everyone, and welcome to another edition of Lesser Known But Awesome Heroes. And today, I am not only hopped up on gobs of sugar, but today I will actually be talking about one of my favorite characters that was introduced to me from Batman Brave and the Bold. Yes, one of many other characters aside from the Doom Patrol and others. Including Jaime Reyes the Blue Beetle, but I have no time to waste. Today I will be talking about the Man of Two Worlds, the Earthman Defender of the Planet Ron in the, in the star system of Alpha Centauri. Yes, I will be talking about, about DC's version of Buck Rogers, Adam Strange. Adam Strange was created by Garner Fox and Mike Don Skowski. Skow Mike Skowski, I think that's how you pronounce that. I'm not good with names. But Strange first appeared in Showcase number 17 in November of 1958. And he is very reminiscent of Edgar Rice e Edgar Rice Bruff's John Carter of Mars series. Both characters have had have had the origins of being chased by aborigine type people and finally sounds mysteriously transport at the last minute to distant plants where they become heroic figures and fight and fight evil alien invaders. Um, like most comic book science fiction stories of the of the 1950s, which were very cliche, very over the top, the problems in their stories are pretty much contrived. The solutions are often based on the application of simplistic scientific principles. And after his initial three-issue run in in Showcase, which was from 17 to 19. He the, he he was then moved to the mis, to the mystery in space series, and he was in issues 53 through 100 and and even 102. And Adam Strange would then later be moved into the into the Strange Adventures, which were real into the Strange Adventure storylines. And and apparent and there was one award-winning story from Strange, which was which resulted in a in a continuity gif in the in the Justice League of America comic, in which the Flash mentions Adam Strange as a possible new member for the Justice League, a group he had not met, and who and who could not and who could have not had heard of him, as all his heroics took place on the planet Ron. When a, letter, when a letter to the editor reported this, Garner Fox wrote a story showing how the JLA came to Ron and how Adam Strange got them out of a trap by Kanjar Ro. <laughs> Which, in my opinion, was a pretty good story, guys. Um, however, Strange did decline an off, in, in offer into being included into the JLA as he had responsibilities on Ron. And... To give you guys a basic, a basic backstory, I probably should have done this uh, like a minute or so ago. But Adam Strange is an archaeologist. He was finding, he found the mystic Mayan ruins, the ruins of the of the Mayan people, being chased out. His only escape was a waterfall, so he jumps off this waterfall, and at the last minute, is hit by this bright yellow beam, and. It's uh, and it's thought that he disintegrated when in fact he was actually teleported to an alien world, a lush alien world that was that was absolutely beautiful. I mean, we're talking garden, you know, the Garden of Eden type beautiful. And it's there that he ha that he would meet his future wife Aldana, who is the daughter of one of Ron's chief scientists, and her father not only built a translator device that allowed strange to be able to understand their alien language but he also but he also shows them a star chart that the planet ron and earth are actually parallel to each other west to east and that originally the and that originally aldana's father created the zeta beam and the zeta beam is basically how adam strange gets to and from ron and the way that Aldana's father describes it is that it was basically a microwave radio sequence that he, that they bounced off of Earth because they had heard Earth was 
a pre was pretty intelligent at this time in studying space travel that they wanted to communicate with Earth and try to make a peace treaty. Well, due, well, due to the Zeta beam being shot out into space, cosmic radiation altered it into a teleportation beam. So when Strange was escaping the Mayan civilization or what was left of it, that it somehow survived, Strange was actually teleported pretty much parallel to the planet Ron, which was actually 25 trillion light years away. And so whenever Adam Strange teleports to the planet Ron, it's just a straight shot. You know, there's no alteration, there's no nothing. However, 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 the interesting part is that when the Zeta Beam is hit, it basically just bounces around. So for about a month, about one or two, about like one or two months, a couple of days, and like a couple of hours, Adam Strange has to basically predict pretty much, th you know, through scientific means and through... I guess you can say geography, where the Zeta Beam would hit next. And in the very first issue, Strange didn't really... Strange helped the people of Ron, and they were trying to find these ancient scientists who had destroyed all the weapons, because Ron had declared itself a peacekeeping planet. And after destroying all the weapons, pretty much alien, alien enslavers came and tried to take over Ron. And by some luck, every 25 Earth years, on our on on our Earth, the <coughs> oh, excuse me, the scientists, the the mystical barrier to their immortal like fortress, they had discovered the source of immortality and pretty much would only appear every once in a while. Strange pleaded with the scientists who wanted who didn't like the fact that their weapons were being used for war. However, see, however being in kind of a damned if you do, damned if you don't situation, they're like, all right. So they built weapons and then apparently and then apparently the scientists in their last feet before they actually died. Because leaving their immortality shell, their little like safety their little like safety alpha wavelength thing, they would die within a matter of hours. So they got to work and they basically made Ron its weapons again. However, they made the contingency plan that these weapons could be destroyed if they were ever used for tyranny or any such or military coup or any such, you know, fashion. They were to be used with great humility. And as you can see here, Adam Strange, his spacesuit is was actually built by these guys and and let me tell you something, he wields energy weapons, solid light stuff from his from his spacesuit. He actually has he actually he, he has basically like this special filter sequence in his helmet that allows him to see into the electromagnetic spectrum. On top of that, Adam Strange, the, you know, literally, Adam Strange's spacesuit can actually survive interstellar space. So basically, this spacesuit is built to basically filter out kind of the, shall we say, the gravitational friction if he were to like fly around Earth. So he wouldn't burn up like a marshmallow on re-entry when he comes when he comes back in so this so pretty much this so pretty much strange's spacesuit allows him to fly out into space without without any need or worry of being choked out in space because apparently the because apparently the way that they describe it his spacesuit has almost kind of like an uh, was built with like an aura or like a, or like I uh, shall we say an infinite kind of oxygen vac oxygen vacuum feature but one downside of the Zeta Beam is that Strange is altered with the radiation from the Zeta Beam, and pretty much what happens is is that every so is that for only a couple of hours or so, Strange can be on the planet Ron. However, after a certain period, the radiation will wear off and he'll be teleported back to Earth, leaving Aldana to pretty much you know wait till the next time that she sees her her future husband. However, it's been talked about that. Oh, excuse me. It's been talked about that if Strange were to ever you know, that it, that if the Zeta Beam was altered, that Strange could actually live up to to literally a one, you know one whole year on the planet Ron, and that's it because that, because after that one whole year, the after that one whole year the pretty much the the state bleh, I cannot speak today. Take two. 
the atmosphere of Ron would basically end up affecting Strange's human anatomy, meaning that literally he wouldn't be getting enough oxygen or like basically the air around him would make him susceptible to alien diseases that would probably kill him off very quickly. So, unfortunately, Strange can live up to one whole year on the planet Ron, but no more. However, they usually, however, they just usually stick with the idea that, oh, he could only be there for, like, a couple of hours, and then he teleports back to Earth. But he does eventually marry Aldana, and I can't remember correctly, but I think they do end up having a couple of kids. But, I'm going to, but I'm going to, but of course, guys... I'm going to actually do a little bit more research here as I'm t as I'm talking because I'm trying to research all this. But basically guys, that is the origin of Adam Strange or at least or at least the basic origin that they give in the comics. Um I'm going to get into his marriage and all that stuff here in about here in a minute. Okay. Now, let me search here. Now, what's interesting is that for years, Strange actually had a regular appearance, was a re had a regular presence in the DC Universe, and it was by the 1980s that, that Alan Moore would publish a more cynical reason for his visits to Ron. Apparently, the population of the planet, the, the majority of whom viewed, viewed the Terran with content, is sterile, and the real reason... who view the Terran with contempt is sterile and is the real reason for Adam's presence for Adam for Adam's appearance to be a breeding stud this new situation is further illustrated in the 1990 limited series the man of two worlds where Adam learns of the population's opinion of him and Aldana died died giving birth to their daughter Alla A L E E A in JLA number 20 of July of, 1980, of 1998, Aldana is revealed to be alive and at the end of the story is reunited with her husband and daughter. A bit briefly, as Strange is teleported back to Earth soon after Aldana's arrival. It should also be noted that, that Moore got the situation on, on Ron wrong as children are visible in several of the earlier stories. However, his story does remain pretty interesting, if not well written. And let's see. I already told you guys about his backstory and how he came to be on the planet Ron and what have you. However, Strange would be would be would reappear in Grant Morrison's JLA run. However, Mark Wade, however, when Mark Wade filled in for Morrison, he he did an entire re, an entire renaissance for the character, establishing new motivations and updating the character's role in the DCU. Strange kidnaps the entire Justice League, the entire Justice League, and it is believed that he is insane. This is however, it's however later revealed that Strange had a device that broadcast that broadcasted negative brainwave activities making the league believe that he was actually insane when in fact throughout the whole entire time he actually was sane and he kidnapped the JLA as a backup during a, get, a desperate gamble as a race of, as an alien race of telepathic slave traders had pretty much tricked him into bringing them to Ron and he was taking over Ron so, and, and they took over Ron after using Aldana to discover the secrets of the Zeta Beam technology, they were going to convert the entire planet to one giant teleporter system, and they were going to use Ron as a focal point to enslave other planets. And you, and pretty much the way that Adam Strange defeats these aliens is that he uses his own body, having you having Zeta Beam technology tethered in, tethered into his body or his spacesuit rather. He uses himself as a focal lens to basically send the ship to another dimension and stop the invasion. However, tragically, right after he is reunited with his family, he disappears back to Earth again. And there's a nice little scene where John Jones, the Martian Manhunter, puts a comforting hand on his on, on his shoulder. 
and the League actually admires Strange for the fact that he not only beat an entire alien species using only his wits, but they also acknowledge the pain of him always having to constantly teleport back to Earth and, wa and just constantly wait to see his loved ones again. He would also appear in an eight-issue miniseries in 2004 called Planet Heist, where where pretty much the the planet Ron is believed to be, you know, permanently destroyed and that he is blamed for it. However, it's revealed that the planet was actually put in an alternate dimension to avoid to avoid an intergalactic to avoid an intergalactic star destroyer known as Starbreaker who is going to destroy the entire planet. And with the help of the Dark Stars and the Omega Men and many others, you know, Strange was able to defeat this evil being. And Strange would also be prevalent along, and would, would fight alongside Hawkman and Hawkwoman during, during a storyline called the Ron Thanagar War, where when Ron was moved, its orbit be was believed to have pushed the planet Thanagar closer to its sun, destroying much of its surface. However, it's later revealed that Superboy Prime was the one who actually moved Thanagar. And many Thanagarians were relocated, however, anonymity among the two races were eventually started a war, and working alongside Hawkman, Hawkwoman, Kyle Rayner, and Kilowog, Strange tried to end the conflict, and also and also this six-issue pre precursor to DC's 2005-2006 limited series in the DC crossover event, Infinite Crisis. He was able to, have, to end the war when he discovered evidence of Superboy Prime's role, and he was also involved in the New 52 working alongside Starfire, Animal Man, and many others. And he was also involved in a, in a storyline called Countdown to Adventure. There was the Ron Thanagar Holy War. There was a reinvention of Strange Adventures. And he joined, and eventually, a storyline involving the Rebels. I could go on through all this, guys, but there is a whole lot of information. And I think I'm just going to stop the video right here. But bottom line, guys, Adam Strange... The man from the planet Ron. I'm going to take a few minutes, and I'm going to, do, and I'm going to describe what makes Adam Strange as a character so great. Now, what makes now sadly, I think one of the most interesting parts about Adam Strange as a character is that although he's not one of DC's higher echelon type characters, it is ra it is rather cool that DC tries to find ways, if they can, to utilize him. Because it's very, because, I mean, if you look at him, especially in this Alex Ross painting that I have right here, he's a great throwback to the old adventure stories of the 1950s, these old sci-fi stories. And I, and I call him DC's Buck Rogers because he does, he reminds me of Flash Gordon, Buck Rogers, and all those other, like, pulp superheroes. And I think that was the intent that Geiner, that Geiner Fox had back in 1958 when he created when he created strange he wanted to pay tribute to the old like pulp heroes of the fi of the 50s like sci-fi serials and whatnot but anyway guys that is adam strange that is the that is the earthman defender of the planet ron hope you guys actually enjoyed this and what makes adam strange awesome well Although he's not one of the higher echelon characters, he's still probably one of the mo one of the coolest and most interesting, shall we say, cosmic characters in DC, and that makes him lesser known, but it also makes him awesome. See you next time, guys.